Okay, folks, it's your buddy Mike Messier. I thought I'd do a little something different right now. This is a Mike's Nostalgia Ride. I haven't uh, really done this before here on the, the channel, One Mike Messier. Uh, some of you might be familiar with One Pro Wrestling, a sports fan. One Man in a Camera Films, but this is for the One Mike Messier. This is uh, intimate discussions, usually film reviews. Today it's a fucking restaurant memory. When I was a child, when I was younger, um, the big pizza place in town, and this you might be wondering, well, gee whiz, Mike, what town would that be? Burke, Burke, Virginia. You've probably not heard of it unless you were from there. It is a uh, division of Fairfax County, Virginia, which is a suburb of Washington, D.C. Uh, yes, the state of Virginia, the northern Virginia area, uh, very suburban. When I was a kid, it was just getting to the point of being very uh, kind of polished and shopping centers everywhere and so forth. <clears throat> now, if you go to that area, it's really like that. Gentrified, you might say. A lot of traffic. It wasn't like that when I was a kid. It was still on the come up. All these uh, folks, uh, like my father, who worked for the government, would uh, not want to live in downtown Washington, D.C., or even the surrounding areas. They kind of went out to the burbs, and that's where I was raised. So this uh, pizza place, Mr. Gaddy's, was kind of like the hot and happening thing for a child, for a kid. First of all, they had the pizza, which was always uh, very good, I thought, as a kid. I mean, I didn't have, you know high standards for pizza, but it was good by my memory. And <clears throat> furthermore, there was uh, a lot of video games. And at the time, uh, some of you folks probably can't imagine a world where you didn't have all these wonderful video game options at your fingertips, but you actually had to go to a place and put quarters into a machine, quarters which are currency. I, I don't mean to condescend, but uh, some of you probably just grew up, you know, with a uh, Nintendo 64 or a PlayStation 3 or whatever. And you just, uh, not to say you take it for granted, but, you know, it's just been a part of your your childhood. But for me, uh, this was an era where some of this stuff was kind of cutting edge, brand new. It was a pop culture uh, movement. Uh, you might say that for the better, for the worse, people got a little bit less in, involved with their own bodies and more involved with the, the video game world. But, you know, for a wonderful time, uh, the video games were a lot of fun. And we had some classics back then. Uh, I mean, I remember being a Dig Dug proponent. Uh, Centipede, I was actually quite good at. Uh, Miss Pac-Man and Pac-Man was also quite good. Um, pinball, I was decent. I mean, I think everybody's pretty decent at pinball. That's one of those games where everybody kind of looks somewhat cooler than they are playing pinball. You just stand there and push flippers. Uh, what else? But, yeah, the Mr. Gaddy's experience was such a big part of my youth, my childhood. There was actually two Mr. Gaddy's in the area. There was one right up the street. And, of course, that wasn't the better one. I mean, the one up the street was fine. It was just a bit smaller. There wasn't as many video games, but the one uh, near George Mason University and where I would later go to high school um, <clears throat> was the University Mall, Mr. Gaddy's. That was the hop and happening place. It was about twice the size as the one closer to me in Burke. <clears throat> and this one had its own dedicated video game room. The big the Mac Daddy game at the time was this, God, what was it called? The the castle one, like the, the fucking night one that was animated way ahead of its time. Uh, kind of like this, almost like a Dungeons and Dragons, but it was like this Lancelot asshole. I don't think I ever even got to play that game. I remember watching older people play it because they would just hog up the game so much. <sighs> but, um, and God, look at my memory. Mondays and Tuesdays. I want to say we're either, I want to say the deal was buy one pizza, get one half price. I don't think it was buy one, get one free. It might have been buy one, get one half price, but it was one of those two deals. So of course, 
that was such a big deal for people back then. So exciting. So you'd see a lot of families, you know, or mix and matches. Sometimes you'd see a family taking somebody else's kid, you know, by permission, of course, uh, to the Mr. Gaddy's. And everyone was having a wonderful time eating the pizza, stuffing their faces, playing the video games. So what brings me to this memory? <clears throat> well, I, I remember as time moved on in my high school days, uh, the Mr. Gaddy's, for whatever reason, fell out of fashion and I know really one of the big reasons was because dun, 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 Pizza Hut came to town. Pizza Hut, you know, a national franchise. We did not have that in the area until maybe my sophomore or junior year of high school. Pizza Hut came in like gangbusters and just wrecked Mr. Gaddy's. And I don't even think Pizza Hut, from my memory, didn't even have a arcade games. But by that point, the arcade games were kind of phasing out from fashion because everyone had a Nintendo at home or a Sega, wherever the fuck. So <clears throat> people were into Pizza Hut, the Thin and Crispy, the Pan Pizza. I think you had all these options. They had something back then called Priazzo, which was basically a stuffed pizza. It's not pizza, it's Priazzo. All, all this arrogant shit that Pizza Hut brought to the table and Mr. Gaddy's just, to, you know, what we thought was just our local hometown pizzeria. Little did I know there was more to it than that. Mr. Gaddy started suffering <clears throat> and business. And sometimes we, you know, the last couple of years of Mr. Gaddy's, sometimes we'd still go there, but it was almost out of irony, you know, like, oh, we're going to Gaddy's, like we're, we're slumming it. You know what I mean? Like we're slumming it by going to Mr. Gaddy's, which just four or five years earlier was such a highlight of our young lives. Now it was something to be mocked and ridiculed. I mean, I think I had maybe my fourth grade birthday party at a Mr. Gaddy. So it was such a big part of my childhood. Once again, the Washington DC area for the pro wrestling fans, you might know that there was a um, gentleman named George Michael. I think he's no longer with us, but George Michael was actually a pro wrestling advocate back before that was cool in the mainstream media and I remember being a very young Mike Messier uh, actually this might have been my uncle uh, Mike Messier who was in the Mr. Gaddy's and saw a clip of Magnificent Morocco defeating Pedro Morales in Madison Square Garden for the Intercontinental title for the second time his second run the clips in Mr. Gaddy's during the nightly news, because that was such a big deal. This is pre-VCR, this is pre-DVDR, all these things, folks, you had to see things as they happened. So for me, or my uncle, to be in the Mr. Gaddy's while this was being broadcast, these clips of a wrestling match that was probably three or four days old, was very exciting. And I think that's actually the first time I even saw Magnificent Morocco, because my memory is that he came back to the WWF after being gone for a year or two and immediately got the Intercontinental title back. And I had never seen the guy before because that's the gap of when I started watching or my uncle started watching wrestling. Uh, see, I have uh, shared memories, you know, uh, that my uncle had. But anyway, we moved forth. As I got older, Mr. Gaddy's just seemed to be on the outs. I remember when they started closing down the first, the location closest to me closed, then the next one. And the last time I can remember, I believe, going to any Mr. Gaddy's was visiting a pal of mine, good old Chris Brown, at his college, James Madison University. And they had a Mr. Gaddy's in the neighborhood, which was a buffet. And even then, it seemed like a nostalgia trip. Like, oh my God, we're going to a Mr. Gaddy's and blah, blah, blah. Well, fine, folks. Flash forward many a year. I'm driving home from Austin, Texas to Jacksonville, Florida, all these southern states, like really, you know, after spending many years in Rhode Island, New England, where my temperament, my uh, cynicism has been refined like a sword in New England. Now I'm back in the south, even deeper in the south, driving back from Texas, and I start seeing... You know, and I'm trying to get some good miles in. I'm trying, you know, to get back in a, in a fair amount of time. And I see signs on the interstate, Mr. Gaddy's. And I'm shocked. It's the same logo. I don't know what the hell's going on around here. 
And it said ex exit 68. I wasn't, ter I was a bit hungry, but not terribly hungry. But you know what I mean, hungry enough that I could eat. So I'm like, well, God, how many times in my life, whatever's left of it, if it's a week, 10 years, 50 years, however much time I have, when am I ever going to see a Mr. Gaddy's again? So I pull the fuck over. Um, and like this little town, it's like a little village somewhere in Louisiana, y'all. Somewhere here in Louisiana, it's like this little village. And I find myself face to face with this restaurant. I, mean, I didn't even use the GPS, I just looked. And here it was, Mr. Gaddy's all day, all you can eat buffet. My God, what are you trying to do to me? Oh. So I pull over and I'm just shocked and amazed. I go in and um, I look over and it's it's not like I remember it. It's a much smaller venue than either one of the ones that I was growing up. Um, but there is a buffet, it's all set up. These young people, I mean, probably teenagers or 20s working there. Nice, nice people. Um, you know, like, what do you want? Oh, buffet. So I order it and it's $14.84. And the young lady even says, is there any type of pizza you want? I'm like, wow, this is wonderful. I mean, I'm not just getting the three hour pizza that's been seen under the hot lamp all fucking morning. <coughs> I get to order something. So I recall my childhood pizza of choice at Mr. Gaddy's was pepperoni, Italian sausage, and Canadian bacon. And I tried to order this and it all, I kind of botched it a few times. I said, uh, pepperoni, Italian, uh, bacon and ham. And I, I had to correct myself. I had to like tap into my inner youth and order properly. And I ordered it. So it's pepperoni, Italian sausage and Canadian bacon, which I always thought was exciting. Cause like you've had Italy represented it. You had Canada represented it. All these wonderful things. And she says, sure. And then she says, it'll be about six minutes. I went to the men's room. It wasn't much to brag about, to be honest. Uh, left there in a hurry. Got an unsweetened nice tea, which I always get in these situations. And then I'm just sitting there. I even did something I typically don't do with these buffets. I got some of the half-assed salad, some spinach. I said, I got to at least make something redeemable from this meal. I haven't been eating pizza a lot in the last couple of years, but this was the exception, folks. And uh, they brought it out. They brought out the fucking pizza, just like I ordered it, put it on the buffet. Uh, I timed it ever so, I mean, I sat near the buffet. I wanted to keep an eye on these other people. There were other patrons there. I don't want them touching my special pizza before I touch it. So... I saw the young man. He seemed to take his job very diligently, maybe 24, 25 years old. Had a 5 o'clock or a 9 o'clock shadow. Uh, but he seemed to be taking his pizza making seriously. Um, and I see him cutting up the fucking pizza, and I'm like, I'm going to be the first one. I don't want some snot-nosed fucking Louisiana child touching my goddamn pizza here, okay? So I get up there, get three slices... And it was fucking good. And you might be wondering, well, gee whiz, Mike, I bet it wasn't as good as you remembered it. I dare say it might be, I might think it was better, to be honest. I don't know why. It just seemed like, uh, it just seemed really good. They didn't have, um, I would say that the toppings were not perfectly proportioned. Like I didn't, like each slice didn't have a good representation of the Canadian bacon, Italian sausage and pepperoni, but over the course of three slices, I got my fill of all three toppings. Went back a few, I'm not going to lie to you. I went back, you know, several times. Clean plate each time you go to the buffet. That's the rule. And, uh, I mean, I probably got up to seven plates. And that's not, I didn't have a full monumental plate each time. Uh, but there was some pizza. They had these dessert things. And I'm sure all my numbers, you know, for, for whatever the fuck, medical are all through the roof right now, sugar, whatever the fuck, everything's fucked up, um, this was definitely what they might call a cheat day, uh, but definitely, was it worth it for the memories, I think so, 
Uh, they did have a game room. They called it Gaddy's Playroom or some such nonsense. I could hear it before I could see it. I could hear people playing uh, uh, table hockey, which was always my personal favorite. My sister and I used to play that competitively. I could hear somebody play in that. I could hear some video games. I wandered over eventually. And it was not the way that the old Mr. Gaddy's was, with just like a lineup of quarter machines. This had like the tokens and all the bullshit. Um, and it just felt like a very small version, you know, of a high-end modern uh, video game room. Uh, but, you know, it was still nice to see. I mean, the spirit was there. It wasn't, obviously, it wasn't the exact same. You know, I mean, this has been a, a, several years ago since my childhood. And it's a totally different state. It's the same company, I guess. I'm going to assume that the ownership has changed. Uh, and here we are in Louisiana. I don't know how mis many Mr. Gaddies are left in the world. But every once in a while you see stuff like that. You know, like Roy Rogers used to be a big thing from my childhood. That was the first place I ever worked, believe it or not. If you don't know, Roy Rogers was a fast food restaurant. And so, you know, every once in a while, I think in New Jersey there's one off the turnpike and I'll stop by, you know, just to be respectful of my past, past, my youth. So that's it folks. So maybe you have some, some type of thing in your childhood, some type of business, you know, like you see these declining franchises. I think there's even one blockbuster video left in the world, in the country, the USA. And you see these things that were such a big part of your life. Yes. <sighs> They're places of business, they're inanimate objects, they're, uh, you know, people, places, and things that have come and gone, but they're part of our fiber, of our being, <clears throat> and today I experienced that. Now, I'm probably going to be praying the, pay, I'm pr probably going to be paying the price. I'm going to get tired. I was tired going into this situation. Now, with all this pizza in me, I'm going to feel fucked up, uh, you know, but, I mean, I think it's fine. Uh, like I said, I'm paying the price, uh but I, I feel like it was worth it. Um, there's, seems to be someone in this parking lot that's staring a hole into me. They're wondering why I'm talking to myself, but that's okay. I'm talking to you. So that's it. My Mr. Gaddy's memory is subscribe and do everything I say.